Good morning, ladies, gentlemen, and honored guests. I am Cadet Samuel Stenard, and I will be your Master of Ceremonies. On behalf of the Army, Naval, and Air Force Reserve Officer Training Corps units, I welcome you to our 2016 Joint Commissioning Ceremony. To preserve the dignity of today's events, please take a moment to silence your cell phones and other electronic devices. Today is a monumental occasion for the young men and women who will be taking the commissioning oath and pledging their lives to our nation. Thank you for joining us in recognition of this commitment and to celebrate the completion of ROTC instruction and transition into the Officer Corps. We are pleased to have with us today members of the Worcester Polytechnic Institute Board of Trustees and distinguished members of the Worcester Polytechnic Institute faculty and staff. We'd like to ask that you stand and be recognized. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise and direct your attention to the commissionees at the rear of the tent. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the members of the commissioning party. Lieutenant Colonel Michael DeRosa, Professor of Aerospace Studies and the Commander of Detachment 340, Air Force Reserve Officer Training Corps. Lieutenant Colonel Justin Putnam, Professor of Military Science and Commander of the Bay State Battalion Army Reserve Officer Training Corps. Captain Vernon Kemper, Professor of Naval Science and the Commander of Naval Reserve Officer Training Corps Unit, College of the Holy Cross. Mr. Philip B. Ryan, Chairman of the Worcester Polytechnic Institute Board of Trustees. Dr. Lori E. Leshen, President of Worcester Polytechnic Institute and the Commissioning Officer for today's ceremony, Captain Thomas Kelly, a Holy Cross graduate who received the Medal of Honor for his gallant actions in Vietnam. Captain Kelly retired from the United States Navy in 1990 after, after 30 years of service. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the presentation of the colors the national anthem, and the invocation given by Cadet Lewis Blanchard, Army ROTC. Military members, please be advised this is being treated as an outdoor ceremony. Salute as appropriate, and please wear your covers.
Let us pray. Dear God, we come before you on this joyous day to thank you and praise you for all the mercy and blessings you have given us. Lord, we rejoice and we praise you as today these men and women begin their journey as officers in the United States military. And as we look ahead to the unknown future, we turn to you for guidance and peace. Almighty God, we give these capable and willing men and women into your hands. May their lives bring honor and glory to you. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, Cadet Blanchard. It is now my privilege to welcome Lieutenant Colonel Michael DeRosa, Professor of Aerospace Studies and Commander of Detachment 340, Air Force ROTC. Good afternoon. Um, please, uh, please be seated. <laughs> In the spring of 1960, Captain Thomas G. Kelly was looking forward to his own commencement at Holy Cross. A couple of days before graduation, his two buddies disappeared, and when he asked where they went, they told him they had gone downtown to sign up for Navy Officer Candidate School. The next day, he did the same. Not through any glamorous or romantic vision of serving my country, but just because my two pals did, he would later recall. That decision would eventually result in Kelly receiving the nation's highest award for valor in combat, as well as a lifetime of serving his country as a naval officer and as the state's Secretary of Veteran Services. After he was commissioned, Kelly served in the Caribbean and volunteered for the Navy's River Assault Division in 1968. On June 15, 1969, then Lieutenant Kelly led a team of eight boats extracting soldiers from a riverbank in the Mekong Delta, South Vietnam. When one of the landing craft experienced a malfunction and came under attack by enemy forces, he ordered his boats to form a defensive perimeter around the damaged boat and return fire. Then he maneuvered his own vessel directly in, in the line of fire to protect the troop carrier and the soldiers in it. When Lieutenant Kelly was struck in the head and seriously wounded by shrapnel from an enemy rocket, he continued to relay orders to his men while lying on the deck until the damaged boat was repaired and the troops it carried were out of harm's way. Lieutenant Kelly survived his wounds and was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor on 13 May 1970 on his birthday 46 years ago today. He continued his service on active duty until 1990 when he retired as a captain. Retired from the Navy, Captain Kelly continued his service as a Department of Defense civilian, as Commissioner and then Secretary of the Massachusetts Department of Veterans Services. He was and continues to be a consummate advocate for veterans. He once told his staff that if someone asked for help and was a vet, then they needed to find a way to help. When Governor Deval Patrick wanted to provide him a send-off after his 41 years of service, Captain Kelly only agreed on two conditions. First, he wanted his friend Richard Doc Nelson to be there. Doc was the Navy corpsman who had saved his life in the Mekong Delta. Second, Captain Kelly wanted the event to help veterans. That gala raised $300,000 for the Massachusetts Soldiers Legacy Fund. He said he wears the medal as a representative of all the men and women that had fought and were not in a position to be recognized for what they did. Without further ado, I am proud to present this year's commissioning officer, Captain Thomas Kelly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Colonel, very much, and good morning to everybody. Uh, President uh, Leshen and trustees, distinguished guests, uh, military uh, men and women, and pa parents, very proud parents of uh, those who are going to be commissioned today. And for the men and women who will enter military service today, it's a very special good morning. In the next few days, your classmates from Worcester Tech, Holy Cross, Worcester State, Fitchburg State, UMass Lowell will be receiving their degrees and moving on 
to the next phase of their lives. A big deal, to be sure. But you stand out from them because of the life of service which you chose four years ago and is now becoming <coughs> a reality. It's been a tough slog. It involves lots of sacrifices, carrying a full academic load at one of these special universities, while learning what it's like to become a soldier, sailor, airman, or marine. And now the real journey begins. You will be embarking on different courses as you leave here. Infantry training, nuclear power school, flight training, basic school, service on a surface ship, or a number of other options. And at this point, I would like to give a big shout out and express my thanks to the moms and dads in the audience for giving, up, for, for giving you up to the American people for a life of service. It's a hard choice with the uncertainty of what lies ahead. But be assured that your country is grateful and will do all it can to give them the means to carry out their mission and to come home safely. But whatever career path you have chosen, you share one very special distinction, that of a leader in the United States Armed Forces. And that's a sobering thought. It involves much more than the extra rank or privileges you'll enjoy as a commissioned officer or the technical skills you pick up along the way. Along with those privileges comes an awesome responsibility, which is what sets you apart from the women and men you will be, be leading. You should feel very humbled and fortunate that the American people have entrusted you with their greatest treasure, their daughters and their sons. <clears throat> this is an awesome responsibility, so please take it seriously. And always keep in mind that you are serving the American people in the United States Constitution, not some colonel or admiral. If you don't mind some advice from a 30-year Navy veteran, I'm going to give it to you anyway. Listen to your NCOs and chiefs. Let them know that you respect their service and advice. They are not a threat, but a tremendous asset. Get to know your troops. Each one has a story which makes each one different. Learn about their families, their issues, their goals, their challenges, without invading their space. Insist that your NCOs stay close to the troops and lead them with compassion, fairness, and integrity. Get off Facebook email, Twitter, long enough to talk to the troops face to face. Allow some fun in your life. Startups are having social events. There's no reason why a military unit cannot do the same within limits. And finally, if your unit has a so-called morale problem and you're looking for the cause, here's a piece of advice. Go into the bathroom, close the door, stand in front of that glass thing hanging on the wall. Chances are you're looking at the cause of the morale problem right there. So I congratulate you on what you have achieved so far and wish you fair winds and following seas as you embark on your journey. Thank you for giving me the honor of swearing you in today. Thank you. Captain Kelly, on behalf of the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force Reserve Officer Training Corps, and our newest lieutenants and ensigns here today, we'd like to present you uh, with this small token to say thank you for, for coming and uh, leading this ceremony. It's my first birthday present. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Charles. Also with that is a, is a birthday card uh, that was signed by each of the new uh, lieutenants and ensigns here today. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the commissioning portion of today's events. To preserve the dignity of the ceremony, please remain seated and refrain from taking photos until the administration of the oath is complete. We have a professional photographer in place and will make these photos available to you. Commissionees, post. Captain Kelly will now administer the oath of office. All military personnel, please stand. <clears throat> the 
Okay, you ready? Okay, repeat after me. I, state your name. Having been appointed a rank in the United States military, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose, of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the office upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. You're in. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now pin the rank on our new officers. This portion of the ceremony is a long-standing military tradition, which highlights the significance of placing a higher rank on a uniform for the first time. In a moment, we'll have lieutenants take their places. We will then invite their loved ones to join them in front of the stage and perform the honors. In the interest of time, we ask that no more than three people join each new officer in front of the stage. And please be prepared to return to your original seats within five minutes' time. Commissioners, post.
Ladies and gentlemen, please make your way back to your seats at this time. This concludes the pinning portion of our ceremony. We will now present the commissions to each new officer and recognize those officers selected as distinguished military graduates. Once the commission is presented, the newly commissioned officer will receive their first salute. It is tradition that the person who participates in this first salute receives a silver dollar from the new officer. This tradition has its roots in the British military, where newly commissioned officers were assigned to an enlisted soldier. Their enlisted mentor would train them, teach them the history of their regiment, and ensure their equipment met appropriate standards. It was customary for a grateful lieutenant to compensate this enlisted man with a small sum of money, a tradition which lives on and which we honor today. It signifies the deep sense of respect and gratitude which all officers have for their enlisted counterparts. If you are rendering a first salute to one of our new officers, look to the left of the stage where you see Sergeant First Class Travis Blanchard. Please make your way to him at this time. At this time, I invite Captain Kelly, President Leshen, Mr. Philip Ryan, Captain Kemper, Lieutenant Colonel Putnam, and Lieutenant Colonel DeRosa to please come forward to present the commissions. The first cadet commissioning today is Alex Balsevich. He attended Worcester State University and will serve in the U.S. Army Reserves as a military intelligence officer. Lieutenant Balsevich will receive his first salute from Master Sergeant Thomas Blair, U.S. Army. Jason Beauregard is a distinguished military graduate who attended Worcester Polytechnic Institute and will serve in the Corps of Engineers. Lieutenant Beauregard will receive his first salute from Master Sergeant Thomas Blair, U.S. Army. Esteban Bonilla Perez attended Fitchburg State University and will serve as a transportation officer. Lieutenant Bonilla Perez will receive his first salute from Command Sergeant Major Curtis Palmer, U.S. Army. Andrew Feeney is a distinguished military graduate who attended Worcester State University and will serve as an aviation officer. Lieutenant Feeney will receive his first salute from Sergeant First Class Travis Blanchard, U.S. Army.
Kyle Foley is a distinguished military graduate who attended Worcester Polytechnic Institute and will serve in the Corps of Engineers. Lieutenant Foley will receive his first salute from Staff Sergeant Brian Foley, Army National Guard. Patrick Gooden attended Fitchburg State University and will serve as an infantry officer. Lieutenant Gooden will receive his first salute from Corporal David Bombard, United States Marine Corps. Ryan Kennedy is a distinguished military graduate who attended the University of Massachusetts Lowell and will serve as an infantry officer with a branch detail to military intelligence. Lieutenant Kennedy will receive his first salute from Master Sergeant Thomas Blair, U.S. Army. Alexander Close attended Worcester Polytechnic Institute and will serve in the Corps of Engineers. Andrew Close attended Worcester Polytechnic Institute and will serve in the Corps of Engineers. Correction, Liam Keenan attended Worcester Polytechnic Institute and will serve in the Corps of Engineers. Lieutenant Keenan will receive his first salute from Master Sergeant Thomas Blair, U.S. Army. Margaret Long attended Worcester State University and will serve in the U.S. Army Reserves as a medical services officer. Lieutenant Long will receive her first salute from Airman First Class Timothy Mullane, United States Air Force, retired. Alexandra McLaren attended Worcester Polytechnic Institute and will serve in the Signal Corps. Lieutenant McLaren will receive her first salute from Specialist Joshua Maldonado, U.S. Army. 
Anthony Mantelli attended Worcester State University and will serve as an infantry officer. Lieutenant Mantelli will receive his first salute from Specialist Brian Lavoie, U.S. Army. Daniel O'Donnell attended Fitchburg State University and will serve in the Ordnance Corps. Lieutenant O'Donnell will receive his first salute from Chief Warrant Officer 3, Travis Harwood, U.S. Army. Liam Parker is a distinguished military graduate who attended the College of the Holy Cross and will serve as a field artillery officer. Lieutenant Parker will receive his first salute from Airman First Class Richard Parker, United States Air Force. Taylor Powers attended the University of Massachusetts Lowell and will serve as an infantry officer. Lieutenant Powers will receive his first salute from First Sergeant David Powers, U.S. Army, retired. Grant Brining attended Worcester Polytechnic Institute and will serve as a submarine warfare officer. Ensign Brining will receive his first salute from Midshipman 3rd Class Hunter Brining. Christopher Cahill attended Worcester Polytechnic Institute and will serve as a combat systems officer. Lieutenant Cahill will receive his first salute from Senior Master Sergeant Kenneth Cahill, United States Air Force, retired. Marielle Cregan attended Worcester Polytechnic Institute and will serve as a Space Operations Officer. Lieutenant Cregan will receive her first salute from Staff Sergeant Ashley Thompson, United States Air Force. Daniel Long is Detachment 340 Distinguished Graduate. He attended Worcester Polytechnic Institute and will serve as a finance, financial management officer. Lieutenant Long will receive his first salute from Airman First Class Timothy Mullane, Air National Guard.
Connor McMillan attended Worcester Polytechnic Institute and will serve as a developmental engineer. Lieutenant McMillan will receive his first salute from Technical Sergeant Robert McMillan, United States Air Force, retired. Francis McLaughlin attended Worcester State University and will serve as a remotely piloted aircraft pilot. Lieutenant McLaughlin will receive his first salute from Sergeant Frank Procopio, United States Marine Corps, retired. Miles Schuler attended Worcester Polytechnic Institute and will serve as a combat systems officer. Lieutenant Schuler will receive his first salute from Private First Class Richard Sokol, United States Marine Corps, retired. Richard Seary attended the College of the Holy Cross and will serve as an intelligence officer. Lieutenant Seary will receive his first salute from Staff Sergeant Ashley Thompson, United States Air Force. Yak Wong attended Worcester Polytechnic Institute and will serve as a developmental engineer. Lieutenant Wong will receive his first salute from Master Sergeant John DiLorenzo, United States Air Force, retired. Brent Young attended Worcester Polytechnic Institute and will serve as a developmental engineer. Lieutenant Young will receive his first salute from Master Sergeant Jolene Outland, United States Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating our nation's newest officers. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the benediction and remain standing for the playing of the Armed Forces songs and the retiring of the colors. Let us pray. 
Dear God, we come together on this prestigious day to honor the past, present, and now future leaders of the United States military. This achievement could not have been accomplished without the support from each person here today. God, give these men and women the courage to remain faithful to the United States military values. Allow them to maintain the integrity and honor necessary to lead this great nation. I thank these men and women for their abiding dedication to our nation's finest military branches. God, I pray for joy and success in all of these leaders' future endeavors. In your name we pray, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to join the new officers in singing their service songs. The words can be found on the back of your programs. Color Guard, retire the colors.
ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the exit of the official party. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our formal ceremony. There is a barbecue at the Campus Center for each new officer and their family and friends immediately following the events. Commissioning class of 2016, dismissed. <laughs>